हरिओम ओ सहनावत सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिद्विषावह ओ शाति 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 समस्तजनकल्याणे निरत करुणा नमामि चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओ श्री चिन्मय सद्गुरव नम योगे न चित्त पदे न वाचा मल शरीर से वैद्यक योपाकोत्तम प्रवर मुनीना पातंजलि प्राजलीना नी हरि one of the major <coughs> drawbacks of our life is not to think about ourselves we are carrying on with the life presuming this is the way to lead the life there is a need to pause and observe why am i leading a life the way that i am leading is it right is it because everyone is living the same way i am just following the herd or have i or have i analyzed that there is a reason why i am behaving like this and if my way of leading life is correct right then why is it that i am not happy i earn money i marry i have children i have car i have possessions i dabble in adhyatma i try to follow satsang i wear nice clothes but everything seems to be an attempt everything seems to be an effort not delivering the result that i wish i am focusing on the means <coughs> the possessions are the means i am having a beautiful bow and arrow very expensive but i am not firing an arrow from it and it's not hitting the bull's eye every attempt that i try to do i utilize lots and lots of means sadhana <clears throat> sadhya is not in my sight anymore there is an enormous collection of sadhanas in our life and everything around me including me is a sadhana for me to achieve a sadhya and the sadhya is in one word absence of sorrow <clears throat> दुख विनाश इवन मै चिल्ड्रन मै वाइफ इज अ साधन मै शरीर इज अ साधन मै फेरारी इज अ साधन 
my most expensive writing instrument sadhana and that sadhana i hope should should give me happiness or it should unhighlight the sorrow which it doesn't i have reached to the other end of life now the second half the better or the bitter but still the happiness is eluding me now perhaps is the time to stop and think that the methodology the strategy seems to be totally wrong and when you minutely observe why i am not happy we realize that i am not behaving the way i should be behaving in this world that puts us to a very fundamental question if i am a part of the cosmos or the constituent of the creation for whatever reasons we are not going to the depths of the reasons but now that i am here how should i be behaving what should be my relationship with the world around me and with myself in the tragedy of the analysis after the analysis the tragedy that comes out is very very few exceptional brilliant gems of creation like gurudev no one has understood how to behave in this world how to be in this world so there is something called normalcy in the world and there is something called abnormality in the world we live in abnormal world so is the world abnormally created by the lord no sir the abnormal world is the creation of the mind so we all have employed our mind to create an abnormal world in which we stay and our life is nothing else but full of abnormalities and aberrations one of the most prominent abnormality of the mind or the aberration of the mind is a desire imagine a very simple basic fundamental aspect of our living is we are supposed to live l i v e and not desire in other words every time you desire you don't live normally you live abnormally ask a question what desire gurudeva had none and he lived are we without desire at any point of time never so we are living abnormally <coughs> <coughs> thoughts that emanate from the desire are also abnormal because the mother of the thought desire is abnormal so we are living in this world with abnormal desires producing abnormal thoughts living in abnormal world all these abnormalities of the mind or the antakarana are called vikshep
Vikshep means abnormal mind. A mind that is constantly bubbling to project the thoughts through the desires is an abnormal mind. When the seeing apparatus is at a fault, the vision is bound to be faulty. So when the abnormal mind is there in this world, the world itself is an abnormal view for that particular individual. So the logical conclusion is we are abnormal people living in a world which is abnormal, which presupposes that there is something called normal world which we are never aware of. So there are two worlds, one created by the Lord positively because we have not created the world, we are the part of the world. So the Lord's world and my world, my world perceived or created through the mind is an abnormal world and the world that was created or that is created by the Lord is a normal world. In the abnormal world, there are tons of abnormalities, most important being sorrow. The sum total of abnormality is lack of bliss. While in Lord's world, there is no dukkham because there is no abnormality. Dukkha is an abnormality. Anandam is normality. Once for a student of yoga, it is clear that the mind has abnormally projected the world, which is called vikshepa then those abnormalities are the obstacles antaraya in realizing the normal world of the Lord. In other words, the nine obstacles that the mind has created and separated the Lord from the me or the Lord's world from my world are called Vikshep Antaraya, Antaraya ha, means obstacles. They are nine in numbers. Vyadhi, Stiana, Samshaya, Pramada, Alasya, Avirati, Branti Darshana, Alabda Bhumikatva, Anavastitam. These are nine obstacles created or abnormal structures created by my mind which keeps me the Lord or Lord's world away from me. The whole sadhana for the yogi is to overcome these nine antaraya or pratipaksha obstacles of the mind. Those who have these obstacles, how do you ascertain that you have these obstacles? How do you know that you have these nine obstacles? You can see their effects. And the effects are called vikshepa sahabhuhu, the accompanying abnormalities. Vikshepa sahabhu are the effects of these nine obstacles. And what are those four effects with which our life is painted with? Dukkha, Daurmanasya, Angasya, Ejatvam, Shwasa, Prashwasa. Because of nine abnormalities or nine obstacles which we have created through our mind, 
to keep the Lord away from me or to keep the normalcy of the creation away from me, it results in four effects in my life. And the first and the foremost effect is Dukkham. This is the first cardinal principle or first satyam of Gautam Buddha. Buddha said, world is full of sorrow. Which world? My world. The world created by mind is full of sorrow. Daurmanasya. Daurmanasya is agitating mind, melancholic mind, depressing mind, fidgety mind. Is it not the situation with all of us, sir? Every day, irrespective of whatever we are doing, the mind is constant. Constantly jumping, even when I am eating the food, it is jumping to hundreds of subjects. Even when I am working in the office, forget that. Even when I am relaxing, I do not relax because mind keeps on jumping. And the mind keeps on planning a weekend with tons of friends at home. A party outside. Let us do that. Let us do this. Four days holidays. What are the plans for the holidays? We ask a question to each other. Have we ever asked a question to each other that when are you going to keep quiet? Four day holiday, I'm going to have a solitude. I'm going to spend time without planning, without desiring, without doing anything. We don't. Because we have fallen prey to the obstacles. So our life is described in one sentence. A poor and a helpless monkey jumping from object to object for the sake of the search of happiness. So Daurmanasya is an agitating, unstable mind. So Dukkha Dharmanasya Angasya Ejatvam. Ejatvam is a vibration or kampana. Vichara is kampana. Anyway, understood as kampana because when we sit quiet, a yogi when he sits in meditation, his shariram also is without kampanam and mind well kampanam doesn't mean trembling alone trembling is the heightened kampanam but agitation of the mind as well as agitation of the body we all know shavasana shavasana is relaxing the body why do you relax the body? Because it is always under contraction and tightening. We have never experienced a loose, relaxed, uncontracted body. What to talk of the mind? So, Angasya Ejatvam. <clears throat> we feel a lot of commotion inside the body. It need not always vibrate or show tremors, yet 
we know that there is a speed inbuilt in the body. We are never quiet in solitude, absolutely relaxed, nothing moving psychologically in the mind as well as in the body everything appears to have come to a standstill that is normalcy which never happens so dukkham daurmanasya angasya ejatvam and the last is shwasa prashwasa Koshtastha vayuhu nissarati iti prashwasaha exhalation bahistha vayuhu achamati iti shwasaha We all are destined to breathe Prana is the need for the subsistence of the Sharira. But because of abnormality of the body and the mind, agitative world that we are in, our Prana Vayu movement, Achamana and a nissarana inhalation and exhalation is also affected so we no more breathe the way lord wanted us to breathe as was told earlier only an infant less than one year of age and the realized Siddha Purushas like yogis are the only one who breathe normally. Not even a world class athlete breathes normally. Because abnormalities of mind are first and foremost immediately reflected in breathing. So Shwasa Prashwasa is an effect of agitations or the shape of the mind and this is a very important high class discovery by yogis and Patanjali Maharaj because if you are able to master the breathing conversely you will be able to master the agitations of the mind either have a mind which is not agitating and you will breathe normally or breathe normally and the agitation of mind will come down. And after a lot of research on this, the yogis of yesteryears, the rushis and the munis, discovered the way of breathing. So abnormal are our breathings these days that we do not realize that we are breathing abnormally. Try breathing normally and we will realize that all of a sudden the body is relaxing. You are afraid, you are angry, you are agitated, you are sad, you are unduly happy. Breathing cannot be normal. So for a normal Shwasa and Prashwasa 
the mind has to be absolutely still. The quantum of pranavayu that the body needs and the mind needs for its working is very minimal when the body and mind is at rest. That is the reason why the yogi breathes only three to four times in a minute. Sometimes not even once. You feel as if the yogi is a log-like person. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa in his Samadhi Avastha used to breathe very slowly to the extent the examining physician is to feel as if he is at the end of the life. So the number of respirations we take in a minute, the quantum of pranavayu that goes inside the body and the pressure with which the pranavayu goes inside the body. So the number of respirations, quantum of oxygen and the pressure of oxygen or pranavayu, these are three things that decides a normal respiration even medically. A yogi masters the act of breathing and that is the reason why pranayama has taken a center stage in yogic management of the mind. And that is the reason why this four vikshepa sahabhu dukkha dormanasya angasya ejatvam ejayatvam and shwasa prashwasa are to be kept in mind. The question now is if these are the impediments to the mind how do you tackle that? I told earlier that Patanjali Yoga Sutram is a practical compendium. It is not a Tattva Jnana theory alone. It is based on a sound principles of Tattva Jnana of Sankhya, but it is an absolute detailed compendium of the work, the workout. And now Patanjali Maharaj starts his commentary, his sutras on how to tackle the abnormalities of the mind or the vikshepa of the mind so that the vikshepa sahabhu are destroyed, dukkham is destroyed, ejayatvam is destroyed, daurmanasya destroyed, shwasa prashwasa is completely completely regulated and sahasaritya automatically. We all know the walking God Gurudeva was never depressed or had never negative thoughts. He was constantly ask anyone what is Gurudev? Oh, he's bubbling with enthusiasm, always happy, smiling, radiating. Sir, we need to understand from where this Chitta Prasannata came. It came because of work on the mind. And that is why after describing the Vikshepa, Vikshepa Sahabhu, Patanjali Maharaj undertakes what are the means Vikshapta 
these are the obstacles so far described samahit chittasya ete na bhavanti patanjali maharaj gives a verdict that all these agitations of the mind happen to to whom vikshepa chitta but one whose chitta is samahit Now this word samahita samahat unagitated mind this word is going to come again and again and again and again throughout the patanjali yoga sutras samahita chittasya vikshepaha vikshepaha means antarayaha antaraya means obstacles na bhavanti with this much of background now patanjali maharaj undertakes means and methods of controlling the mind very very critical and practically important for us and the verdict given by him is tat pratishedhartam ek tat तत्व अभ्यास त्र प्रतिषेधार्थ तत्षेधार्थ तत्षेधार्थ तत्स फॉर द एजिटेशन ऑफ द मैंड एक तत्व अभ्यास देर शुड बी ए प्रैक्टिस रिपीटेटिव प्रैक्टिस ऑफ एक तत्व mind well we are studying yoga sutras it is a sutra grantha and sutra lakshanam is first lakshan of sutram is alpaksharam not one comma is used extra and for the sutra grantha the example as an ideal sutra grantha is patanjali so that is why he has given only four words tat means those obstacles pratishedhartam to remove them ek tatva abhyasah now comes the question what is this ek tatva the bhashyakaras have their own arguments on this word ek tatva means what vachaspati mishra maharaj says ek tatva means ishvara but this is not accepted by majority of the commentators more so by vidyana bhikshu bhoj in rajamartanda vritti and others also majority of them have opined that ek tatva means one principle if you want to remove the obstacles of the mind you have to study abhyasa of ek tatva now this ek tatva has got some fundamental understanding into it the fundamental understanding is the consciousness or the chaitanya when it associates with the vishaya my chaitanya is associated with this particular handkerchief and i get the knowledge of the handkerchief i will not know handkerchief unless my consciousness from me flows through my eyes touches the handkerchief and enlightens the handkerchief the perception is complete and then i will get the cognition that this is a handkerchief the only problem is when i look at the handkerchief i get the knowledge that this is handkerchief but i do not get the knowledge of the real nature of the handkerchief even in our science a chemist will say this is not an handkerchief but this is just the cotton fibers which have come together now why is it that i could not see it because my eyes were incompetent i had to analyze this into thread form and the fibers of cotton were seen under the microscope and then i came to know that means i used the same sense organ but the methodology changed i went deeper into the handkerchief 
a physics person would come and say that no sir this is not even cotton fiber this is all protons electrons and neutrons why couldn't i see it earlier because the item was not analyzed further so so far the science has reached a stage of seeing any item into protons electrons neutrons and now the quantum physics has gone beyond that saying that this is not a handkerchief this is just the vibrations these are spandanam of certain particles this is where the science has reached as of today yoga shastra by focusing the mind on this handkerchief goes beyond this to know the exact nature of any object including the handkerchief and once you come to know any object all objects are known because all of them have similar identical underlying patterns if this is the case then to obviate to remove the obstacles of the mind it goes without saying that consciousness should be applied on any one thing any one thing in other words it should not be flitting from multiple things it is a big discovery in the early parts of yoga shastra in thousands of years back after deep contemplation and practical experience the munis realized that if the consciousness which flows through the mind towards different objects the objects are same and they are different at different places but the consciousness applied is same you see a stone the consciousness goes towards the stone you see a tree the consciousness goes towards a tree each time is the consciousness different that consciousness which got associated with the stone is it different than the consciousness which got associated with the tree the buddhism believes that they are different but the yoga shastra believes that consciousness is same it just moves from one place to another place that which experiences stone is the same consciousness which experiences tree in buddhism it is not so so that is why on this commentary of this sutra the buddhist view has been countered but that is besides that's a technical study of this particular sutra what is important to remember in this sutra is antarayasya pratishedhartam ek tatvam abhyasa iti upayah practically it so the upaya for the mind let us let us put everything into a proper perspective i am in an abnormal world the abnormal world is full of vikshepa the abnormal world's classical criteria is dukham and i am dukhi this is established no one exceptions of gurudeva apart no one can say that i am not dukhi you may call it by different names now the question that dukha is there to remove that dukham in other words to remove the vikshepa in other words to bring back the mind from abnormality to the normal see in other words to come back from mind's abnormal world to lord's normal world one has to do ek tatva abhyasam now yasya chittasya avasthitasya idam shastrena parikarma nirdishyate tat katham now comes the question that what are the preconditions for ek tatva abhyasam i am very keen now to remove the sorrow i have understood the abnormality of mind i want to make my mind normal i want to come out of this abnormal world and get into the world of lord and 
be permanently away from dukkham how can i do that and for that ekatattva abhyasam solution is ekatattva abhyas ekagrata focusing on one thing and to do that to do ekatattva abhyasam the preparation that is required is called chittasya shuddhi or chitta shuddhi maharaj we have heard about the word chitta shuddhi so many times in adhyatma in bhagavad gita in every spiritual discourse we heard we have heard this word chitta shuddhi but how do you do the chitta shuddhi what is the precise method of doing the chitta shuddhi only yoga sutra has described it and then because of this chitta shuddhi why do you do chitta shuddhi ekatattva abhyasam for ekatattva abhyasam for ekagrata you require chitta shuddhi what is what is the meaning of this do not attempt ekagrata unless there is chitta shuddhi you will fail now you will understand why people try to get into meditation they never do meditation they can never do meditation because first stage is sir chittasya shuddhi a dirty man cannot clean because he himself is dirty cleaning himself is a prerequisite for cleaning something else unless the mind is purified unless the chitta shuddhi is attempted ekagrata will not be there so first thing first do not jump on meditation it will be a failure sitting at one place trying to bring mind to one point and spending one hour on that that is not going to give us any success all that would happen during such meditation is you observe the agitation of the mind nothing more than that the object of concentration is to get into a state where the mind is not agitating ekasya tattva abhyasam if that is not happening it is not a meditation so those meditations who are doing it now they are psychologically feeling that i was meditating but that is not the meditation and the reason why it is failing is because there is no chitta shuddhi and that brings us to a very very critical point what shall i do to do the chitta shuddhi or the next sutra is the sutra for the life how should i lead the life the answer lies in this sutra number 33 33 of the first pad it should be engraved on the mind this sutra should be engraved on the mind because that sutra tells us how to do chitta shuddhi in adhyatma whether you follow yoga sutra bhakti marga karma marga gnana ma any marga the first stage is chitta shuddhi there is absolutely no chance of moving forward in adhyatma if chitta shuddhi is not there i know i am emphasizing and re emphasizing on this point because we forget that this is the first step unless the schooling is done properly you should not obtain to be in college unless the foundation is strong do not try to create an edifice it will crumble so for any person who by god's grace is thinking about his life not everybody doesn't think about his life because they're so busy and engrossed in their own things that is the reason sir whether it is a jeff bezos or any other rockefeller 
they have no significance in yoga shastra or in adhyatma because they are also attempting to find the anandam and have failed miserably the yardstick of success in transactional world have no value whatsoever in adhyatma that doesn't mean adhyatma is against the vyavaharika success yes sir sure. but it makes no sense we have ourselves been successful in our own life in, in a little our own way but has it really given anandam we came from families where there was no sufficient food perhaps not sufficient means of transportation and now we are in a comfortable zone we have vehicles we have assets we have what not has it given the anandam then why is it that we always keep remembering even no in our childhood there was actually lot of dearth of so many things but the life was so beautiful sir the dearth was beautiful you have abundance that is also not beautiful dearth was not beautiful because dearth and abundance both are not beautiful the reason is it is an abnormal world an adhyatma parameters of transactional world do not apply so that is why anybody who has done chitta shuddhi or attempted chitta shuddhi is a rich person in adhyatma so sutra number 33 is a direct instruction of patanjali maharaj for how to behave in this world and that is why if we look at this sutra the sutra is maitri karuna mudita upekshanam maitri karuna mudita upekshanam sukha dukha paap punya vishayanam bhavanat chitta prasadanam chitta prasadanam chitta prasadanam means chitta shuddhi prasanna chitta id shuddha chitta are we prasanna chitta never we are worried chitta anxious chitta depressed chitta angry and agitated chitta that is what we are anger is a vulgar transformation of chitta or antakarana if you are a an angry person be sure you are miles and miles away from chitta shuddhi vikara is a direct reflection of how much impure mind you have a pure mind doesn't have vikara how often you saw that gurudev was so angry that the discourse was stopped and he shouted and no sir this doesn't happen everybody says he was so kind so sympathetic so compassionate so beautiful so happy so cheerful so 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 chitta prasadanam so that is why for chitta prasannata chitta prasadanam maitri karuna mudita and upeksha these four things are required and these four things are the four ways of leading life so how should you be leading a life answer is in 33rd sutra not in the book of marketing no sustenance is a different thing two square meals uh, even if you are dhirubhai or whatever ambani he is also eating the roti i am also eating the roti makes no sense sir no difference sustenance and the art of sustenance has been given too much importance excel in that nobody stops you from excelling in it but keep it at its own place what should be at the center stage is chitta shuddhi for which the four things that are given are maitri karuna mudita and upeksha so we need to study four in in detail because that is what is going to shape my behavior henceforth practical aspect first is maitri now maitri is we know friendship no that is not the way mitra maitri sarva praneshu sukha sambhog apanneshu maitri bhavayet what it means is all the beings in the world not only human beings all the beings in the world when they are happy 
they are momentarily happy or whenever they are happy be happy in their part be happy with them that is called maitri oh my friend son got admission into so and so college but my son didn't get my son didn't get different story my friend son got it be happy as if your son got it even when your son hasn't got it maharaj these are basic things of chitta shuddhi now if you check yourself did i do this in my life no how can you have chitta shuddhi and if there is no chitta shuddhi what what literature are you studying sir it is just a passing book chitta shuddhi means first thing is maitri be happy with whatever happiness is around think it is your own happiness a dog or a cat is hungry and got his or her food and she feels or the dog feels happy you be happy in that a beggar is begging for food hasn't eaten food for two days and gets his bread to eat and he is eating and feeling happy be happy in that any of our colleagues a good thing has happened to them be a part of it feel as if you had it looks very simple but very difficult to implement sarva praneshu sukheshu maitri bhavayet you should feel happy about the happiness of every being and then dukhiteshu karunam if the prani around you any prani around you is not happy he is a sad you should feel the sadness वैष्णव जन तो तेने कहिए पीर पराई जाने रे पीर पराई द ट्रबल द पेन इन्फ्लिक्टेड अपॉन अदर्स बिकॉज ऑफ विच दे आर अनहैपी यू मस्ट हैव करुणा सो मैत्री करुणा मुदितम मुदितम कॉम्प्लेसेंसी वेर यू शुड शो कॉम्प्लेसेंसी पुण्यात्मकेशु मुदिताम इफ यू कम अक्रॉस अ पुण्यवान पर्सन यू शुड हैव एनॉर्मस सेटिस्फैक्शन in the presence of guru deva you should have full of satisfaction any punyavan person or punyatmak activity happening you should feel good in any satsang it is lord's remembrance in any naam sankirtana you should feel good nice why punyatmakeshu and if somebody is doing apunya shileshu or papatmak karya you should not hate him upeksha upeksha means indifference very difficult a bad man if he is doing something bad with you we immediately curse him no you should be indifferent to him indifferent meaning you are not feeling anything about him no bad no good kar bhala to ho bhala aakhir darvesh ki sada kya hai 
जो तो को काटा बोवे तू बोवे फूल काटे को काटा मिले फूल को फूल मिले काटे को त्रिशूल हिज मिसबिहेवियर शैल बी डेल्ट बाय द कॉस्मिक लॉ ऑफ द लॉर्ड यू डोंट ट्राई टू बी अ लॉ गिवर Mahatma Gandhi was an epitome of this ideology. His life is a life studying, worth studying from this thirty-third sutra. He was never against anybody. He had no qualms about anyone, including Muhammad Ali Jina. To him, he used to call Katia Wadi friend. He had no qualms about his own son Hari Lal. becoming drunkard and getting converted to islam and doing debaucherous things he had no qualms about it in fact when he was absolutely in poor condition instead of saying that oh you are my son but you misbehaved hell with you go out of my way no he called him and said stay with me why because his son was in trouble dukhiteshu karuna सर्व प्राणेशु सुख संभोग आपन्नेशु मैत्री भाव पुण्यात्मक मुदिता अपुण्यशीलेशु उपेक्षा दोज हु आर हैप्पी बिकॉज समथिंग गुड हैज हैपन टू देम यू शुड बी ऑल्सो हैप्पी in a positive sense that means what should not be there na tu irsham don't try to compete what happens normally to us somebody has taken a new ferrari we feel oh my god i didn't have it one day i should have it sir this is against chitta shuddhi on the face every lady says to the other lady oh beautiful sari but in the mind i don't have one like that this is irsha competition that should not be the case if we have this and then you want to sit for dhanam no sir not possible the basic is first chitta shuddhi for chitta shuddhi i have to constantly cross check my behavior on four patterns and those four patterns are maitri करुणा मुदिता उपेक्षा ऑल बैड पीपल कमिंग इन योर लाइफ यू मस्ट हैव उपेक्षा और इनडिफरेंस बी अवे फ्रॉम देम बट डोंट फील सिक ऑफ देम डोंट कर्स देम एवरी पर्सन इंडिविजुअल हु इज इन ट्रबल सर these days people don't ask you money or anything all they ask you when they are in trouble is to have some compassion even that we don't give and when you show compassion it should be from the heart not from the word oh i'm so sorry you lost your job it is a formality not a formality you should feel it what will happen if i lose my job don't say that you know please let me know if you need anything have you done anything armchair discussions about poverty and famine in india even today a lots and lots of people in the world go without food we all know that we are even expert because we have statistical figures with us but what to do all the statisticians in the world have the figures with them only mahatma gandhi was the one who went and tried to feed them how many of us feel that the food that i'm eating at that time do we remember so many mouths which go without food how is it that we don't have compassion very recently a circulation was made by chinmaya family regarding free distribution of bhagavad gita a granth that can really alleviate all the sorrows of the world is bhagavad gita that is being freely distributed and they asked for some donation we saw the mail how many of us we acted on it 
how many of us we thought that if this bhagavad gita goes to 10 more houses maybe one soul will read it and then he will be out of the sorrow that is compassion we do not part with our money we do not donate because we do not think of others why others we don't think of our own spouses have we ever thought that whether my wife is unhappy my husband is unhappy my children are unhappy am i doing enough to alleviate their sorrow if my own family members i am not of any use how can i be of use to somebody outside so karuna dukkheshu karuna swami vivekananda has elevated this to such a level that he said all the vedas and all the philosophies of the world are useless the only thing that i understand at the end of my life is jeeva seva it is not late even now spend as much as your life's resources and always it need not be monetary resources words of mouth shabda is a great resource use a sweet words try to encourage people people in distress feel the pain be with them mind well by doing that you are enriching yourself because your chitta shuddhi is going up if people are happy be happy with them in all the difficulties and distress of the people or the jeevas around you how can you walk when you see a pigeon half dead searching for water how can you just move is it something so important in your life that you can't give little bit of water to the pigeon that is hurt or dying why is it that we always talk the language of beating marne marne ki bhasha just do this four things sir there will be chitta shuddhi and then you will become yogi not before that so a yogi is essentially a person who is happy and everybody is happiness gurudeva so many people came and poured their grievances to gurudeva even in his last days one person with great difficulty managed to get access to him and said sir swami ji i have got heart attack recently and what did gurudev say don't worry i have had many come like a child he used to call everybody close to him he used to sit with everybody as if they are his family members shared all the sorrows of the people that is called the sign of a chitta shuddha person swami ji's heart antakarana was pure like a crystal that is why everybody felt so good in swami ji's company do not just eulogize him do not just say swami ji ki jai what about me have i really got it and that is why for chitta shuddhi maitri karuna mudita any punyavan person any punya thing happening bhagavad gita shravana satsang nama sankirtana puja archana dasyatva sakhyatva any kind of bhakti any punyavan person's biography you are reading mahatma gandhi there are some horrible persons in this world who try to criticize even guru deva as well as mahatma gandhi how can my heart to do that the purest of the punyavan people i must be having mudita complacency happiness in my mind and for all the bad people who have given us bad experiences sir the bad experience i had in my life is not because of those persons because of my own karma how can i blame that person i am married to a horrible person that is part of my karma do not hate him love wins 
hatred defeats just four cardinal principles and chitta shuddhi would be there punyatmakeshu that means those who do punyam you should feel mudita harsham natu dvesham apunyashileshu you must have upeksha or audasanya be udas non committal but natu maitri natu dvesha so with all the bad people don't try to be friend don't try to be enemy with them and after doing all this what happens evam asya bhavayatah shuklo dharma upajayate those who do these four things sat to a guna increases that is the key to the whole thing why tatascha chittam prasidati shukla dharma means sattva guna once sattva guna is on rise chitta prasannata starts becoming better and once the chitta prasannata or chitta shuddhi goes up prasannam ekagram sthiti padam labhet then one becomes fit for become doing ek tatvam abhyas or ekagrata or the meditation which is going to come down the line so 33rd mantra sutra is the sutra telling us how to behave in this world answer is very simple maitri karuna mudita upeksha be happy with the happiness of the jeevas be dukhi and partake the dukham or karuna with these people who are suffering be absolutely harsha bharita when you come across a punyavan person and be udas you know to any papi that is coming around you don't try to hate him or don't try to be friend of him as simple as these four cardinal principles and then do whatever you are doing in this world every act will be doing purification of the mind which is a must for chitta prasannata or chitta shuddhi and also for ekagrata hari om om purnamada purnam idam purnat purnam mudachyate purnasya पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति शाति हरि श्रीगुभ्यो नम हरि